Okay, everybody, this is Chris back again, video three in a series of videos on 12 lead ECG interpretation. Um, so here I have a 12 lead. This is a standard way that a 12 lead is uh, set up in, at least in the United States, there are some variations. Some uh, have a rhythm strip associated with them, but these are your standard lead configurations. So you have lead one, two, three, augmented vector right, augmented vector left and augmented vector front. So AVR, AVL, AVF, right? So one, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF. So basically you have your limb leads here, your Einthalvin's triangles here. You have your augmented leads here. And then the last two sections um, are your precordial leads, your V leads. So you start off with V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. And you can see down here that um, my filter is 0 0.05 to 150 hertz, which as you guys learned in class, the, the, those are my students, um, that this is a diagnostic quality ECG, okay? Which is actually what you wanna see when you run a 12 lead is you wanna see that greater range um, represented instead of like five to 50 or five to 30 hertz, uh, something on the lines of that. Okay, so, Let's now talk about the concept of contiguous leads. Okay, so a contiguous lead are there are groups of leads that look at certain areas of the heart. The electrical activity in certain areas of the heart are represented by certain leads. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna throw a little mnemonic out or a little memory aid for you guys called ISAL. And ISAL stands for I see all leads. And those are the major areas of the heart represented on a standard 12 lead. I is the inferior wall. Okay. So that is the inferior wall of the left ventricle here. And remember what coronary artery supplies the inferior wall with blood? Well, it's the right coronary artery, right? <clears throat> and the inferior wall, the I, is represented by leads two, three, and AVF, augmented vector front, okay? So two, three, and AVF look primarily at the inferior wall of the left ventricle, and of course, that would also include the right ventricle to some extent and the right atrium, right? So this whole area of the heart here is supplied by the right coronary artery, and it is this set of leads here, 2, 3, and AVF, okay, that looks at this specific area of the heart, the SA node, the right atrium, um, the right ventricle, and the inferior wall of the left ventricle. So hopefully that makes sense. So far, so good. All right. So I, inferior wall, 2, 3, AVF. Okay, so the next one that we're gonna move on to is the septal wall, the C, okay? And the septum, okay, is represented by leads V1 and V2. So if we look back at our heart again here, that's the left coronary artery. Specifically, it is the left anterior descending branch of the left coronary artery. It's actually gonna be relatively high up on the LAD and then you have your septal wall right here, okay? So V1 and V2 look at the, the LCA, the left coronary artery, specifically the, the anterior descending branch of it, and it's looking at the electrical activity of the septal wall, okay? And then if we move on, our next lead group is V3 and V4, and that is the all, okay? so. I'll keep this color coded. So I, inferior wall. Okay, that's a right coronary artery, two, three, and AVF. C, septal wall, V1 and V2, the LAD. And then all, V3 and V4, is the anterior wall of the left ventricle. Okay, so that's gonna be the remainder of the LAD. So really, um, V1 through V4 all look at the LAD, but the first part of your V leads, V1 and V2, focus on the septal wall, whereas V3 and V4 are 
more the anterior part of the left ventricle. <clears throat> and then that just leaves our leftovers with one exception. And the leftovers, V5, V6, 1, and augmented vector left, AVL. So V5, V6, 1, and AVL are the lateral wall. The lateral wall. Okay, so I, inferior wall, 2, 3, AVF, C, septal wall, V1 and V2, all anterior, V3, and V4, L, lateral, V5, V6, 1, AVL. And then AVR up here, augmented vector right, really doesn't look at anything. Remember, it kind of looks kind of in this area, so kind of more, more through, the, uh, through the, the aorta and that. And so we don't typically use it um, to localize uh, changes to coronary artery, uh, coronary artery perfusion changes to the heart. Um, it has some other diagnostic implications, but not typically um, for localizing ST segment problems. Okay, so there we go. So what I mean by contiguous leads are leads that are in a group. Okay, so if I have one millimeter of ST elevation in two and three, that is indicative of a STEMI in the inferior wall. If I only had uh, a millimeter of ST segment elevation in three and then a millimeter in V4, these are not contiguous groups. And so that would not support the hypothesis of a STEMI occurring in my patient based on this evidence alone. Okay, <clears throat> so before we end this video, let's just go ahead and a look at this particular 12 lead ECG. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to just do that ISOL method. I start with inferior, okay, and I look, and you can see the J point here, right? And you can see that it returns to baseline in two, so that's good. We have a return to the baseline in three, and a return to the baseline in AVF. Okay, so there are no ST segment anomalies in 2-3 AVF, so the inferior wall checks out. All right, let me turn this thing off. Everyone's calling me today. <laughs> um, so then what I do is I move on to the septal wall. I see septum. All right, <clears throat> so V1. So we look at V1, and again, we have a return to baseline here. Now remember, V1, um, the QRS normally should have... Um, uh, this negative deflection, okay, that, that's normal in V1, and so it's kind of upside down to how you'd normally look at it, but that doesn't really matter because you can clearly see that, you, that the, I have a return to baseline here. Um, and then V2, the same thing, I have a return to baseline here, so the ST segment checks out, so the septal wall is okay. Move over to anterior. I have a return to baseline there at the J point, okay, in V3, V4. I also have a return to baseline there as well. So my septal and anterior walls check out. <clears throat> and then finally, we'll move on to the lateral wall, okay. So V5, again, you can see that I have my J point, good return to baseline there. Okay, so the ST segment checks out there. V6, the same thing, moving on to 1, the same thing there, and then AVL. Again, you have a baseline and then your T wave, and so the J point checks out there as well. And so we would say that this uh, 12 lead ECG is, is normal in the sense that there are no gross ST segment um, abnormalities, and this is actually me here. Hey, how about that? Um, and let's see what the, hey, look at that, normal sinus rhythm. Healthy 39-year-old male. Oh, no. I'm starting to date myself a little bit there. Okay. Um, actually, I'm uh, not quite 39, but, you know, whatever. Um, so, there we go. Uh, this checks out. ST segment's all normal. In the next few videos, we will examine several 12 leads where I have abnormal ST segments. Okay, guys. Hopefully you found that helpful. And as always, thanks for hanging in there.